All right, so you, you aced your driver's test, huh? You're ready to hit that open road, freedom, and all that. But real talk for a sec. Yeah, driver's dead doesn't exactly prepare you for everything, does it? Not even close. Like, remember that whole section on deciphering weird car noises? Yeah. Me yeah. neither. But no worries, that's what we're here for. Exactly. Knowing the rules of the road is one thing, but feeling confident and prepared to handle the unexpected, that's a whole other skill set. And that's exactly why we're diving into these articles today. Totally. We're talking car maintenance must-knows, the kind that can save you a tow truck and a lecture from your parents. Plus, defensive driving strategies that go way beyond don't text and drive. Though, seriously, don't do that. And most importantly, we're going to help you shift from feeling like a nervous newbie to a driver who's got this whole being on the road thing down. Confidence is key, right? Mm -hmm. But, okay, both these articles make a really good point. Acing a multiple choice test doesn't make you a pro driver. It's about being proactive, thinking ahead, and kind of, I don't know, expecting the unexpected. Exactly. Think of it like this. You can know all the chess moves in the world, but if you're not anticipating your opponent's next move, you're going to get checkmated pretty quickly. Okay, that's a good analogy. And trust me, out there on the road, you've got a lot more opponents than a game of chess. Speaking of, can we talk about that heart in your throat feeling of merging onto a busy highway for the first time? Like, is it just me or is that basically a rite of passage for new drivers? Oh, we've all been there. It's intimidating for sure. But that's where the practical advice in these articles comes in. Right. It's like having a roadmap for those situations that used to feel totally overwhelming. Exactly. Suddenly it's not so scary. Exactly. So before we even get to the out on the road stuff, let's talk about the foundation your car. One article breaks down essential car care using this super handy acronym FORCES, stands for fuel, oil, rubber, coolant, electrics, screen wash. Catchy. Right. I actually might remember that. Okay. But it's more than just a checklist, right? This is about understanding that your car is basically like your teammate. Exactly. And just like you wouldn't show up to a big game without warming up, your car needs those regular checks to, you know, perform at its best. Mm -hmm. Plus those checks, they can save you a world of trouble and money down the line. For real. Preventative care is where it's at. It's like remembering to stretch before you work at a little effort up front can save you from a lot of pain later. 100%. Think about it regularly, checking your oil, your tire pressure, those things. It's not just about avoiding a breakdown on the side of the road, although that's a major plus. It's about spotting potential issues before they become major and expensive headaches. Okay, that is music to any new driver's ears, especially if you're, shall we say, on a bit of a budget. And speaking of avoiding those expensive headaches, remember that time I told you about ignoring that weird rattling sound coming from my engine? Turns out a little O for oil check could have saved me a very pricey tow truck ride and a very stern talking to from my mechanic. Oh, I think we've all been there at some point. Mm. But that's a perfect example of what these articles are all about, learning to recognize those early warning signs. Like, if you know what a healthy engine sounds like, you're way more likely to notice when something's off. And that, my friend, is invaluable. So we've covered keeping our cars happy because a happy car means a happy driver, mm. right? But now let's talk about navigating that whole jungle out there on the road, all those other drivers. Right, and that's where defensive driving comes in. But it's not just about being super cautious, you know? Yeah, it's not like we're aiming to be scaredy cats out there. Exactly. It's more about, like, strategy. One of the articles had this great analogy. It said, imagine everyone else on the road is playing a slightly different game, like with their own set of rules. Oh, okay, I kind of get that. So you don't know what those rules are, right? Makes sense. You got to be extra observant because of that. So it's less about every other driver is a terrible driver, even though some days it feels that way. Not going to lie. And more about, okay, everyone's got their own thing going on, so I need to be ready for anything. Exactly. You got it. Like yeah. expecting that squirrel to run out in front of you, even if you're thinking, why would a squirrel even do that? Sometimes they just do. I feel like life on the road is basically just expecting a bunch of squirrels running out in front of you. That's a great way to put it. And both these articles really emphasize this tactic called scanning, constantly checking your mirrors, looking ahead, that kind of thing. Basically, you're creating a mental map of what's happening around you. Right, right. So nothing takes you by surprise because you're already kind of a step ahead. Exactly. Okay, speaking of essential driving skills, can we please talk about the following distance rule? Because I feel like that's one they drill into your head in driver's ed, but does anyone actually DO that? Yeah. Okay, serious question. How much space is enough space? Because I feel like every time I think I'm good, the person behind me is basically like in my back seat. I mean, I'm a 
pretty confident parallel parker NAW. But when I was first learning, let's just say I needed all the space I could get. Right. And that's the thing. You know, people are still learning, even if they've been driving for a while. But yeah, one article breaks it down, like the actual physics of it, mm. your reaction time, plus the car's braking distance. You need way more space than you think. Yeah, this is why I love these deep dives. Practical info you can actually use. Okay, so we've talked about the car, the other drivers. Mm. What about when the weather decides to throw a wrench in things? Oh, yeah. Mother Nature does not play by the rules of the road. That is for sure. It's like... One minute it's sunny and perfect driving conditions. Next minute you're practically swimming down the highway, dodging those massive puddles. The unpredictability is real, but you can be prepared. One article really emphasized checking the forecast before you even leave. Simple, but so important. Wait, so you're telling me there's a way to avoid those moments where you're caught in a downpour and realize uh -huh. you haven't refilled your windshield wiper fluid since, like, forever ago yeah because i have definitely not been there definitely check that wiper fluid but it goes beyond the forecast too like if you're driving a long distance it's not a bad idea to look at radar maps that sort of thing just to see what you might be heading into okay that's a really good tip forewarned is forearmed right but even with the best preparation sometimes mother nature has other plans so what happens when the weather takes a turn for the worse when you're already out there asking for a friend who might have driven through a blizzard once or, you know, just a really heavy rainstorm. We've all been there, but one of the articles had this really good point. It's okay to pull over. There's no shame in prioritizing safety. I mean, I guess that's better than ending up, well, you know. Speaking of things that can wait, let's talk distractions. Because maybe this is just me, but the smartphone thing, it's real, especially for newer drivers. It's so tempting to just quickly glance at a notification or something. Oh, absolutely. And both articles were very clear about this. Distracted driving is no joke. It's true. It's like when you're first starting out, you don't realize how much mental energy goes into just like staying safe on the road. It's a lot to process for sure. And that's actually a really good point from one of the articles, knowing your limits. Like if you're not comfortable having a conversation while driving, that's totally OK. Pull over if you need to. It's better to be safe than sorry. Right. And I feel like that's a sign of a good driver, not a bad one. Mm. Knowing when you need to just like take a breath, focus on the road. Mm. So we've covered a ton of ground here from forces to, you know, watching out for rogue squirrels. If you had to pick just one thing you'd want a brand new driver to remember from all this, what would it be? Ooh, that's a tough one. But I think honestly, and it goes back to that idea we talked about earlier about being proactive. Driving is a skill, right? It takes practice and awareness and a willingness to keep learning. The more you pay attention, the better you'll get at, you know, spotting hazards, reacting in time, and just overall feeling more confident behind the wheel. That's so well said. And it's such a good reminder that, like, driving isn't just about getting from point A to point B. It's about being present, being aware, and respecting the fact that, you know, you're driving a powerful machine, no pressure or anything. Right. It's a big responsibility for sure. Absolutely. Well, on that note, dear listeners, we've reached the end of our deep dive today. From car care essentials to resisting those tempting smartphone distractions, we've covered a lot of ground. Remember, being a good driver is a journey, not a destination. So stay curious, stay informed, and most importantly, stay safe out there. We'll catch it in the next one.